Day four of every day going live streaming for the 13 days of Halloween, doing really fun Halloween art. I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and I'm so excited to be showing you how you can be painting this adorable, sweet, so cute, he's so, he's fierce, but he's so cute, little mummy. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey, guys. He's very mummy supportive of this mummy. I just really love him. He's just super duper cute. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to be showing you every step of the process, how to create this, everything you need to know about the materials so that you can make this at home. This is going to be real time. It's going to be live streaming. I am doing this every day for 13 days straight, which always gets a little weird right about this point <laughs> of the journey. Where I'm like, wow, I'm really here every day live. Um, so this is a 9 by 12 artist panel, gesso board actually, that I did him on. You could use any surface, including uh, paper for acrylic. You'll see the materials down below. Um, let's talk about these real quick because I know a lot of you guys are going to be painting these with kids. Now, I'm using cadmium pigment, yellow and red. This is cadmium yellow medium and cadmium red medium. You guys can exchange this for just whatever orange you have. There would be no need to ever use real cadmium with a kid. So use hue or just use an orange. Good news on that is it's super cheap on your pocketbook. These little suckers are really pricey. Um, I just happen to like them, but they wouldn't be really appropriate if you're painting with a little one. I've got titanium white, I've got diox purple, I got quinacridone magenta, yellow ochre, thalo blue, thalo green, and Mars black. There's also a traceable for this that may actually be the most adorable coloring page I've ever seen. I just love it so much. And you can grab that for free off the website. That's just for you to have that you can download and color or use if drawing is not your bestie best friend. Now the brushes I'm using are Variety of Brights. That's this sort of square brush. And I have a big boy. This is my Art Sherpa number 30. And then I have a Ruby Satin 20 short handled, a number six bright, and another number two long handled. So I'll make sure these exact brushes, skew numbers are in the description after we're all done. But that's what I'm gonna be using for this whole piece. We're gonna have a lot of fun putting this one in. You guys ready? ready yes, ready, ready? absolutely. Ready, 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 ready. I'm so excited. So I'm gonna put out my yellow and my red because I'm gonna make my orange. Um, the reason I'm actually doing my yellow and my red and demoing making oranges is because I realize the two oranges that I have in my particular paint kit are uh, for professional artists and they're very pricey and there is not a hue alternative to them. So I just wanted to remind you by demoing this with these two colors that you can just mix a red and yellow to make an orange. Hmm. Sometimes we forget that. All right, let's put him over to the side here. I'm going to paint this in orange first, and then I'm going to move him back so I can show you how to draw him in, because I bet there are some people that would want to know how to draw something so adorable and cute. Fierce. Fierce, though. He's super fierce. Can summon dust devils at will. Oops. I see we're using uh, a panel for our surface. We're going to be using the gesso board. Um, but again, any surface that you have, I really love these gesso boards. They're a joy to work on. They help the colors be brighter. They definitely improve your results. And if ever you're doing a very important project, I highly recommend them. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to take my big brush. Ooh, and, um, that's hmm? a big brush. That's a big brush. Big Use brush. whatever big brush that you have because we got to get this first part in just sort of very general. I'm going to pull out my yellow and then I flip it. And so how that like layers that yellow into the brush and then I'm going to get a little of my red until I get a nice bright orange. This is the color I'm going for is a nice bright orange. And in a very loose way, I'm going to paint the whole canvas just a loose, messy orange. Now, I do like that the mixing part of this kind of gives me a few tones of orange. So there's dark orange, there's light orange. That's another reason why I do enjoy mixing because that's very painterly. And for painting like this, I really enjoy showing that it's painted. It's super fun for me grabbing a little bit more of my red in there. Boom, boom, boom. So if you're a little brush and you're painting along this part, you get to just cover all the white. That's what you're trying to do is just cover all the white. You don't have to worry about your brush strokes 
being a little streaky, showing the canvas underneath. And you don't have to worry about them being tidy because we're going to paint a whole fun layer over this. You know, our community member in here, the butcher's wife, she says she loves that number 30. Oh, it's just, it's just a, I love this baby. He's my baby. It's my baby. It is a, it is a big, tough brush. It is a big, tough brush that holds up and holds up and I, holds up. I was, and holds I was like, up. It's like my giant mule brush. <laughs> just. Yes. I'm going to sip my coffee. Okay. I'll I put out coffee? my paint and we can take a question while oh. I'm letting this dry and put out the rest of my paint. Oh, uh, let's see here. There were, uh, uh, let's see. What is the difference between a bright and a flat? A flat has a longer bristle or filament from the edge of the metal part called the ferrule. So if you look at this, this is a ferrule. A flat's longer. It's just about length out. Hmm. That's good like to know. Like they like to say in brushes, length out. Put out a little of our docks purple. And we're going to put out a little of our queen magenta. We're going to be using twice as much white as we use of any other color. So expect to use a lot of white on this project. Now, I know there was a lot of questions coming up about upcoming events and things. Definitely check out our website. We've got an events page there. You can find right on our on our main landing page. You can, so you can find out more information about what's going on now, in the future, or wherever you're at in your time traveling adventures. <laughs> now or in the future. Or in the past. Or in the past. For all of you quarks out there. Aw, I love all the quarks out there. Hi, little quarks. Traveling through time. I think the leptons do it too. Yes. Do you remember in the 80s, you would call somebody a lipton to be mean? You're a lipton. I always took it maybe as a compliment. That was just, maybe that was just an AP <laughs> class thing, but that was something that we did. I remember in AP physics singing Particle Man. Yes. Oh, I love that song. Particle Man, Particle Man, doing the things a particle can. Okay. But this is not a sing-along show. This is a painting show. <laughs> so I'm just taking advantage of the time for this to dry on the canvas because I don't want to get any of this orange or yellow into my next purple layer in any way. So it's nice to let it dry fully. And also, I'm going to show you how to draw him out with chalk. But first, let's talk about our colors. Doc's purple, quid magenta, Mars black, titanium white, yellow ochre, phthalo green, phthalo blue. Now, I don't know what you're painting with at home, but what you're really looking for on a color like yellow ochre is a yellow that kind of looks like a gold. Quid magenta, it's like a bright pink. Doc's purple is a deep purple. Any black or white you have. And then I really like phthalo green and phthalo blue together because they make a really fabulous color you see on him called phthalo turquoise. But you could just grab turquoise. Just grab the blues that you have, the greens that you have on a project like this. Make sure it's just fun. To make sure this is fully dry, I'm going to use my hair dryer. Okay. And then we're going to chalk him in. While she's doing that, I look over here and say, thank you, all you guys coming and hanging out, because there's a whole bunch of you out here. I know we're way past Sherpa, so thank you guys for coming and hanging out. Love, love, love having you. It's a super special thing for me to be able to hang out with all my art friends and spend this time. Definitely take a moment and tell the people in your life you love them. It's a good thing to take a moment and remember, not enough love in the world, so tell somebody near you you love them. All right. Now, I know uh, many, many of you are using the traceable, and just to answer so you know, tracing is not cheating. I wish I could go back in time and tell my baby artist self so many things, and one of the things I wish I could go back and tell her is that tracing is not only not cheating, it isn't necessarily a survival skill mm -hmm. for all artists everywhere. So if you're, if you're young and you're in school and you ever use tracing, know that Michelangelo used that too. You use that for cartoons. It's very tough to transfer images, so it's a good skill to have. Interesting. Right? And you learn, you learn to draw things over time. Now, I'm going to very carefully explain how I put him in. I'm going to give myself, I want to make sure that I've got a little room at the top. So I'm going to take, this is chalk, like what you see on a chalkboard. And I'm going to make sure that I make a little space for myself because I don't want to take him too far up, right? And I'm also going to come down here and make another little space for myself. I want to say that I've got a little room for the feeties. And I've got a little room for the head. Now, on the side, I personally have about three fingers on each side. That's going to let me kind of think about his head. And I'm going to sketch very lightly. And something I want you to see, I'm going to go around several circles. If you're not familiar with drawing circles, sometimes going around the circle a few times will help you find 
the round shape you're looking for, even if you're not somebody who traditionally draws. Because that's going to be really about relaxing your body and your shoulder and working from your shoulder and just traveling around in a nice little plump circle. Now, when I did him, and somebody very adorably said, it's like an Egyptian Pillsbury Doughboy, <laughs> which I thought was, yes, he is an ancient Egyptian Pillsbury Doughboy. So I wanted to give him a little bit of a belly. And how I did that is I came down here and I just made sure that I gave myself some nice little round thought. See how I've got some little round thought? Yeah. Just to make sure that as I come forward, I'm giving him lots of little roundness. Can I ask a strange question? You can ask many questions. They could uh, be strange. They could be good. Patty brought it up, and I don't know that you if you explained this or if I missed it. Oh, okay. How come you painted the undercoating of the background orange when it's purple? Because right now I'm obsessed with an artist, uh, Bob Burridge, who's one of my very favorite artists on color theory. And um, that obsession has turned into this. Okay. So there's <laughs> but a, what there's this a... really is about is when you're trying to create a very exciting color story, when you're trying to make a very exciting color scheme, by using this bright orange under this purple, we create some excitement to our eye because these are in opposite ends of the color wheel. So they're not totally opposite, like yellow's technically opposite. So it's sort of like opposite and one over. This gets to be sort of that split complement story that we can do. So we used a lot of that in there. It's a hot didn't contrast. Didn't make a fun, didn't make a very fun color story, didn't it? It did. It's interesting. We were all, I mean, I was kind of having a like, huh, moment yeah, there. That's why. And when I did it, I was like, oh, I love it so much. And you're going to love it too. Cause you want little pops of orange to pop out. And it makes him seem really interesting and exciting and painterly. So I'm going to come out and I'm sure Bob Burridge is like, she made the cute zombie from my very serious art, <laughs> but he's not a serious artist. So I imagine he would appreciate it. All right. So I'm going to make a little nub that comes out like this little nub that comes out like this. And I'm going to come back here and put another little arm out, right? Little arm out. So that's kind of his little Pillsbury donus. And then very wide out, I did give him a little wide stance. So he seemed a little action oriented, like you do. A really wide stance, action oriented stance. You can see his legs are set wide apart. And that gives me a lot of excitement in my drawing. And I'm gonna make sure that I have a nice wide opening for this big blue eye. Is that not fun? I thought this was real cute, too. Just boom, boom. Nice big eye. He's almost, almost uh, kawaii. He's so cute. Now, the other thing that I got to think about is I've got a bow. I'm going to put the bow in very carefully, but I want to paint a lot of him in first. So once I get this kind of worked out, I do a really cool thing. It's going to trip you out, but you're going to like it. Now, this... Was not, this is your original, right? This is my original work. This is what I do. I'm like, this isn't reference. This is me just feeling like the uh, Halloween collection was looking a little grim. And we needed something a little friendlier for little brushes and also for ourselves to sort of lighten up the space. And sometimes I will get into that place and I'll be like, we're lightening up the space right now. So I'm going to do a fun thing. I'm going to take a little of my purple loaded. I, I pull this out from the paint. I flip it over and I pull it out from the paint and I bring it over to the red. And I make this very dark red. You guys see this? I'm going to paint in all of Mr. Mummy Pants with this nice dark red. Oh. We're going to call him Mr. Mummy Pants, okay? Okay. Mr. Mummy Pants. And I'm going to come in just a little inside my chalk line. And the reason is for that so I can get fluffy with my bandages because he has fluffy bandages. In case you didn't know. Fluffy, fluffy bandages. Nice dark color is going to really help him pop in the world. So you were about to ask a question while we were painting him in? Mm, I don't know. I, I heard you gearing up for one, so I just wanted to make sure. Uh, I didn't I miss don't something. think so. Okay. Oh, I guess maybe just in general, there were some there were some questions like, is this a boy mummy or a girl mummy? This is a boy mummy, and he's very confident in himself. And there's and they were just asking, well, how could you genderify it? I think that's sort of up to you. He told me. Well, I mean, but like if you wanted to make it more girl like, you could add mummy earrings or, you know, mummy high, <laughs> maybe mummy high heels, but you might be an action 
high heel wearing boy mummy. I think you could probably change this up or just determine in your own mind the, the direction that your specific mummy is going. Yeah. I think cuteness is universal, boy or girl wise. <laughs> How old is he? That's a good question. Well, 3,000 years old. A <laughs> couple thousand at least. A <laughs> couple thousand at least. <laughs> but looking amazing for his age. Absolutely. Yeah. So he's really funny and cute. It's always fun to he just laugh out that belly. I always like to just and kind of take my brush and like even push these little lines out each time. Just a little more. And I would like Debbie and all of the other little brushes out there to also know that the printable is designed specifically for you guys to print off and color. Yes. So you can go do that, print it off, color it. It's great for that. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And you can make as many as you want. That's what it's there for. Just really enjoy your Halloween time. If you're a teacher, we've got you. All right. I'm making, see, I just come down on my brush. I go come down. And then I make a little U-turn, and then I come back, and that's how I get that little arm. So we've got this here. This is a nice little dark underpainting. Isn't it just really fun? Now, I'm going to take some of my chalk off, and all I've got to do is use a damp brush. But right now, the paint underneath it... Hey, babe! Uh, I know. The camera's stuck. Here it goes. <laughs> but the paint isn't totally dry yet. So first, it's a good idea for me to dry this paint again. Before I remove all this chalk and start to, like, put in his lines and then his bandages. Mm. All right, but are you ready? I am. Okay. So, while she's doing that, I'll say, don't forget to, um, if you're using some sort of heat mover, to keep it uh, a safe distance away from the, uh, the surface. And also, uh, try to keep it on its lowest heat setting. Because heat really isn't good for acrylic paint, um, and, and student paints and budget paints really can be affected by that. So uh, just make sure you try to keep that, uh, that distance if you can. And here, he low. The flow. All right. So I have this brush. I've cleaned it, and it just has a little bit of water on it. And I'm going to come right here, and I'm going to stroke down to the left side, John. So it's real easy to clean up chalk. There it goes. That's one of the reasons that I like to use it. And there's cleaning up some chalk. Doesn't take a lot. And then our chalk is all cleaned up. And once I have the chalk all cleaned up, right, I can have a very good time. You know how I can have a good time? Mm. So I can make some pinky purple, which is such a fun color. And who doesn't want to make some pink purple? I'm going to get some of my purple and some of my pink here together. I'm going to mix them together and get a bunch of white. And um, see how this is very loosely mixed? Yes. All right. About that level. And I don't have to be particularly neat in this painting, by the way. And then come around here. It's okay to let little bits of orange peek out. And I'm going to very loosely just brush this around. Letting little tiny pops of exciting color pop out. I'm so excited. You excited? I'm excited. I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm very excited. He's so cute. A little more white. If I get a little more pink in there, that's okay. I'm just coming along and making these cute, adorable colors. This is a very loose painted background. You know how sometimes when you paint things, you paint it very neat and tidy? Mm -hmm. This is much less neat and tidy than that. You got to keep it loose and painterly. Loose and painterly. It's okay if some of it's dry brushed and some of the orange peeks out. It's okay where that happens. And it's the play of the orange and purple, which is one of my very favorite color stories. Um, it's okay for them to play against each other. Just grabbing some white there. The white helps my coverage and it also lightens my color a bit to make it seem a little more playful. Coming down, you can see I'm just very loose. Have fun. Be playful. Be playful. Make sure I don't paint on the one I've already finished, right? Yeah. And I'm just keeping this here so I can really duplicate a lot of what I had in the previous one fairly closely. But I'm not going to be too worried about that, guys. And I don't want you to be too worried, especially for a little brush. If you're at all feeling like you've made a mistake, don't panic. Don't start over. Just take a deep breath 
And remember, art isn't about doing things perfect. It's about doing things expressively. Ooh, Happy Bright had a great idea. What? She's using her gingerbread cookie cutter for mummy cookies. Oh, yes. This would translate into a frosted cookie quite beautifully. Having this, made a bunch of frosted cookies, totally. That would be totally good. You can see I came up here with a much lighter purple, and that's okay. I can always come and get a little more pink and a little more purple in there and work that back in. Painterly. Well, I like that idea of the mummy cookies. Mm. It makes the gingerbread me think, man. I got to do some baking. I expect a gingerbread man to show up from this style in uh, my uh, Christmas collection. I have a bunch of sketches and uh, drawings of that already. See, now you're going to have to draw me his uh, little, like, we're going to have to figure out how we make a pharaoh's tomb out of gingerbread. Because it can't <laughs> be a gingerbread house. It would have to be a mummy's tomb. Oh, that would be really easy. You make it. Pyramid. I'm really good at gingerbread. I just don't have any time. I'm maybe, good at it. Maybe we can sow the seeds into the thoughts of our community and they can, they can share with us the pictures of their confectionery genius. <laughs> I think that they should. I would, I would adore that. <laughs> so you can see I'm just being very loose. A lot of the orange is just showing through. And that's going to help this piece feel very Halloween, feel very painterly, be really fun. And, you know, you might even be surprised. You might be like, wow, like, this really makes things feel like, you know, they're really, really, really thought out. Now, let's take our chalk just real quick, and I'm going to put my eye back in. And I do this one first tentatively because I need that to be in the right place. Everything else I feel fairly confident just freehanding in, but it can be a little nerve wracking, you know, getting that first part in. And I'm going to take my small number two bright. See how this is nice and small? Mm -hmm. And I'll come along here and I'm going to make some black lines that I can paint inside. Those will be the mummy wraps. So I definitely want a black line in there. And then the first mummy wrap that I like to do is the one that comes over because it's my focal mummy wrap. Right? And you can even add a little black line up there. We're going to be painting his little wraps and bandages inside that. Make a little swirl one out there. Now you're kind of freehand in this, so it may be a little different than the traceable. A smidge different. It'll be very similar. Very similar. I've, and, and little brush gonna... Nico is at home sick today. Oh, so, I'm so sorry, Nico. Nico, you're going to have to print out the traceable. Here, I'll, I'll show you. I think I've got one. Whoop, there it is. There's this on the screen. That's what it looks like. <laughs> Isn't that cute? My daughter helped me with that. Yeah. She's really good at the digital space, so I can give her a painting, and she makes traceables. Some... When the traceables are real good, it's generally Honey did them. <laughs> so those are available on our <laughs> website at the link in the description down below, and you can download, color it, use it, trace it, print it, color yeah. it. Yeah. Woohoo. Woohoo! Jarrett. Jarrett. Yeah. So I've got a nice little grip of bandages there. I think it can be fun sometimes to bring a little line right here. So I'm going to take that line down. Now, I feel like we've got to have at least one bandage going like that. Mm. And another little bandage going like that. That's a fun little bandage. Let's identify our little tummy with a nice black line coming down. Not fun. Little black line identifying that. And it kind of puts, if you're practicing your drawing, you're practicing your art, putting that line there, this object kind of pushes that leg back behind the belly. I'm going to bring a little bandage down kind of at an angle. And then maybe another one. And then let's come like this into the foot. It's fun to kind of do some fancy bandaging at the foot. You can do anything you need. Because you can come back and paint our bandages, you know, a bunch of different ways. So I'm going to bring this bandage around. Look at that. Right across that belly. Look at that little bandage. And you can see that that is stopping at the uh, little arm there, which is going to help the arm feel like it's identified. I can be a little relaxed right here because I know I'm going to have a bow at the end that I'm going to put over the top. I'm not going to be precious right now, and I don't feel like coloring around a bow. 
There we go. So I'm going to split the little hand up the middle and there's some bandaging. We're just giving them little bandages, right? Yep. Let's give a little leg bandage. And then we could maybe do a little little bandage right there. Footy foot bandage. Footy foot bandage. And then nice big bandage across the belly. Look at that nice big bandage. Across the belly bandage. I come back sometimes with my black lines if I lose them when I'm painting all the stuff in. So don't feel like these have to be perfect or pristine because we're going to be all very loose and creative about it. A little bandage down there and maybe another one here. Let's bring one up here. All right, we're doing pretty darn good. This arm needs some bandaging. There we go. A little bandage comes down there and maybe another little one wraps there. How nice is that? Now I can take that out and I can paint in. Let's get, so you can see this the size difference between these two. This is a number six and this is a number 20. And that kind of doesn't make sense, but that's because this is a short handle. So those numbers in most brush lines tend to run a little bigger. And in a long handle, they tend to run a little smaller, but in size comparison, you can see this is about an inch and this is about a half inch. If you're just trying to determine how big you need it to be. I'm going to paint this all nice and black. Nice and black. You're just leaving. It looks like you're leaving a little bit of the brush strokiness there so you can kind of see the red a little bit through. We'll have a little bit of red, probably not in this shadow. This will probably get enough black paint to be completely black. The black blackness of his of his ocular space where the bandages have moved a little bit and he's sort of peeking out. See how we're going? Mm. There we go. Nice little opening. Now, I'm going to take this brush. I'm not really going to rinse it out. I'm going to wipe it off on a towel. And I'm going to get my yellow ochre, which is that yellow gold color. And I'm going to get some white. And I'm going to make my bandage color. And the little bit of black in there helps them from, keeps them from being too bright. And I'm going to just very lightly and very loosely stroke in. And this will feel like almost weird and messy, a little bandage. See how we're doing? Yeah. Because his little bandages would be yellow, wouldn't they? Some of them would be bright white. But, you know, you don't launder a mummy. This is me wiping off my brush and loading back up and getting a little more white paint. I like to mix up the mixture and come right here and paint very light, very loose. There we go. That little corner can be filled in. Paint that in. Now at this stage, look at mine. It's not neat. It's not tidy. It's very loose. He's not neat. He's not tidy. It can be fun to keep stuff like this loose because it can help it feel like bandages. I'm going to come across and we go down. So if you have little boo-boos, don't get frustrated. Keep it fun. Remember, it should be playful. Filling that in. I'll give that a nice edge there. Offloading. That's where I kind of rub the paint out of the brush. If it's really crawling up into your ferrule, you can always wipe it off on a towel. Make it a little more white into that. And let's pull a little bandage right there. Fun to do these. Let's go right here. And you can kind of see already it's getting bandagey. It is getting bandaged. Gets bandagey at some point. And then you're like, wow, that looks like little loose, messy bandages. How fun. And that's before we ever get playful with the colors and the reflections and the elements on him. And again, remember right here, we don't have to be too precious because we're going to be covering a lot of that with a bow. I'm going to paint a little bandage right there. 
the shape of my brush sometimes can help me. There we go. And remember, you can make some of these looser and bigger around him. A little bandage there. I just dipped in water, got about one drop of water. A little ochre, and I'm just going to come back. This is, all I'm doing is I'm just filling all these in very loosely. And a lot of what's underneath kind of peeks through, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Mike, okay? I'm messing with it. Oh, you're fine. Okay. I'm going to come down here and a nice little loose bandage mark. And maybe this one here at the his little hand. <laughs> Pressing nice and firmly and just letting the paint come off. This is almost a dry brushing, isn't it? Super duper cute. Maybe a little black, a little more gold, and some more white. Just making sure he's cute, cute, cute. Belly, belly, belly. Hmm. Little mummy belly. The cutest, cute belly. I really love, like, all, like, I love the Pillsbury Doughboy and, like, all the little cute jokes about him. Those were real fun for me. Appreciate that so much. I'm, I am excited about maybe thinking about doing more cute monsters because this, this was really fun. You like that? I do like cuteness. I like cute. I think that they were, they were definitely asking for more of this. I think this is a really fun thing. And I think once you have one, you almost have to have a collection, right? Mm hmm That you can hang around the house and get the whole gallery. I think you almost need that. And it's kind of like my jam. I love my cuteness. Come down here. Again, a little bandage. A little bandage here. And you can see how the little pops of color are really fun. You know, and just because something is, you know, maybe a fine art technique, that doesn't mean that we can't apply it to everything that we do in art. You can learn from anything and make it mobile and transfer it to whatever you're doing in your creative world. I'm just adding. So you can see I'm just working the tip of the brush, brushing down. We're all going to take a deep breath and not be critical of our art. <sighs> Let's rinse out thoroughly, thoroughly rinse out. I'm going to get a little bit more of the color that I had from earlier, but a lot more white. You guys see what we're doing? Yeah. And I'm going to come a couple places. Let's come up here and add a little of this up top. Kind of lighten some of these bandages, right? I mean, we did kind of a sharky painting that was very kind of chibi-ish. Yes, we did. They could be friends. They could be friends. Sharky could be friends. I, I You know, it's so weird. Like, I love my shark paintings. Like, Sharknado, Sharky Night. The, uh, just like some of the best work I've ever done on the YouTube channel was the Shark Week work. I'm not covering everything underneath. You know, I'm just, and I'm not going to do every one either. I'm going to just do some. I want to make sure that you've got that layer of paint. So it's not pure white. Not pure white. I and mean, if it gets too bright, you can always go over and get a little bit. A little of this. Boom. Now this one I'll get a little more like, woo. Because I feel like it kind of excites the belly. Yes, it does. And I like that. A little excitement at the belly. 
this wherever I'm feeling like I need it. And Julie, I want to have that really good. Julie was asking that palette paper you're using, that brownish kind mm. of stuff. Who is, what is, where can they get that? Um, I'll make sure that I post something in the comments and maybe add it to the description. This is New Way Palettes. Do you have one? Um, I found these uh, actually through my community. A lot of you guys shared it with me. And I think I'd seen them in Namta, but, oh, and I'll show you what this is. This is Timber. They have it in gray, which we've used before. But this is the Timber pad. And um, I, just, I, just, I just need, like, one. I don't need all of them. This is a Timber pad. Uh, and it's by New Wave. They have a website. If you go to their website, I'll tell you where in your area you can get them and you can get them online. I'll start adding them to the affiliate links. I really love them. And the standing palette that I can hold just to show you guys, I think is the coolest thing because it tucks in, but it's still a peel palette. I love it. I got to use it at Medicon and I'm like such a fan. Look at this. This is like so I can hold and be like, oh, I'm standing at my easel. Anyway, I just yeah, I just they're to... my favorite of the peel palettes, and they make a very safe glass palette, which there are not. You cannot just pull glass out of a frame and put it down as a palette. That's super dangerous. Yeah, super dangerous. So they have a nice tempered glass palette that you can use too. All right, so we have all this. Let's get our little brush again. Little brush. I just uh, didn't want you have to tip up your glass and stuff. So no, no, I appreciate that. <laughs> So I'm going to, I totally got what you're doing. I'm going to come back and, you know, neaten up some of these lines. Oh, nice. That's going to really make a pop, huh? It can make everything pop. And you just go through and you find some of the lines that you think need a little bit of a, a def, high twix, <laughs> a definition. And you can come back and strengthen that shadow. I can come here and come around and be like, oh, no, there you go. See? On the belly. Yeah. Oh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Boobity boo. Boobity boobity boo. You're, you're just, you're faster at your painting than my camera is at scrolling. Well, and this is because I don't have to really be precious about it. These are just some lines. I don't have to get every line. I just want some lines to be stronger. And wherever I feel like that's necessary, I'm going to come around the arm. All right, now let's come down here to the little footsies. I'll still leave a little pop of orange here or there this time. And again, it's, it's like a little dry brush, but it's also really helpful for defining these lines and helping me find that space. You can come here and just improve some of that, okay? And I think everything here was pretty good. So it's not it's not too much. It's just a little a little pop. Rinsey, rinse, 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 rinse. Now I like to mix together my phthalo blue and my phthalo green. I can do it with a palette knife, but you might not have one. So I'm gonna this time just show you how I just take the two and I use my brush to mix them together. This is gonna give me a turquoise. A turquoise I like quite a lot. And you can see I picked up a little of the white and turquoise. And I'm going to come right here. And I'm going to put some of this a couple of places on my mummy. Oh, that's, I, you know, I wasn't exactly sure what I was seeing on the mummy, but now that you're putting it in, I see it. Do you see it? Yeah. It wasn't super obvious. Yeah, and I really didn't want it to be, you know. I can even um, start to come along around. There's this nice little bow, so I can put that in now. Mm. And I'll come back and line that in a little bit, but I can put that little bit in really right now, quite happily. And I can dip in the water, get a little white. And I can even make my little bow. So my bow is a little circle right here. There we're doing. It's a little circle. Yeah. I just use the corner of the brush to get control over that. And then I'm going to make like a little kind of sideways heart or butterfly wing. It's just whatever you visualize to feel like, oh, I see it. Right? You can get a little more color on there. 
Little heart, little butterfly wing. It will pop out in the outlining. Make a nice little butterfly wing on this side too. Fun stuff. And a little more white. I can come over here and blow this over. Bring that back. It's got its little clip. And blow this over. Because, you know, it's very windy where our little mummy lives. So this little bow at this stage isn't particularly neat, but it will be once we do the lining. So you've just got to get a little bit of a butterfly with a little bit of a ball in the center and you're totally good. You don't have to do a lot more. Rinse him out, 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 out. I'm going to get my slightly smaller brush and come right into my water. I might even switch out to my clean water right now. How are you guys doing at home? All the little brushes doing good? All the yes. big brushes doing good? Doing very, very breath? good. <sighs> it's all going to come out in the end. If your painting isn't coming out, it's not the end yet. Mm. Yes, I did totally appropriate that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Seems reasonable to me. Mm. Num, 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 num. Now, to do the eye, I'm going to take my nice number six bright. I left too soon. You left too soon? I changed camera angles thinking you were oh. leaving. And I'm going to make a nice bright turquoise blue. Because that's what I wanted for his little eye. And I'm going to make a nice big circle right in here. And I just do that by just twirling the brush around. Now, I could have used my pouncer. So if you have one of my pouncers, that's a great place to use it. Not just for owl eyes, also for mummy eyes. <laughs> Not fun. And you can't, these are big eyes. These nice big eyes. He looks a little less scary, even though he's quite fierce. Got a fierce eye. He's a you. very fierce eye. And you can always come and get a little more white into it. And I think it's kind of fun to get a little yellow and white. Make sort of this very bright reflection. Okay. That I can kind of put through here. Give his little eye some personality. And I can even take some of that and add it to the bow. Look how I'm doing that in the bow. You ready for it? No, what? It's a fierce eye for the mummy guy. Oh, thank you. I'll make a little reflection right there. And I can even bring some of this color down into the bow. I love whoever did that. That was really good. That was me. Was that you? It was me. Just all you? I think I, I. I mean, I don't mean to sound disbelieving. So <laughs> <laughs> you were clever. I've been married to you far too long to know better than that. I'm gonna add a little more dark color. I just like to give the eye some personality. We'll add a little more. Why? But it's just nice to do that at this stage. If someone else said it, then it was we had we had convergent thoughts. Really? Then I I, I will I will I will. Totally. Because you're afraid I'm going to go check the chat, aren't you? Well, I don't know. Maybe I, I mean, like, because I'm some... sure you did. I believe you. You're a very honest person. But somebody could have said something that seeded it in my mind. That's know? true. Well, you know, I don't know. We're all influenced by what we see in the world around us. It's true. So yeah. I'm just adding a little bit of a little nice light highlight here <laughs> in my bow. And we'll clear all this up after <laughs> we outline it. I just want to make sure that it's as it should be. Boom, boom, boom. A boom, boom, boom. I'm going to test my blue just to see that the little bits that I have popped here and there will take a little bit of pink, and I'm going to get a little of my magenta out. I'm going to load that into my brush, and I'm going to grab some of my white. I'm going to make a bright pink, and I'm going to come right over the blue, and I'm going to just dry oh, brush cool. a little bright pink as well. That makes some, like, very 80s dimensionality. I, yeah, it just really did. And I feel like we need to have a little heart right there. So let's get a lot more pink into our color. So we have a bright pink. And I'm going to just make a little heart. I'm going to come right here, a little line. Now I'm going to come up and join my line. 
and then just brush that in. Come up, join the line, and brush that in. Remember, your heart is perfect. It doesn't have to be perfectly painted or shaped to be a perfect heart. And all mummies deserve love. And we're going. A little pink, a little white. Boom, boom, boom. Just making sure that there's just a lot of little love on that. Look at that little bit of love. Oh, it's oh. cute. Now, for the next layer, it's probably a good idea that everything be a little bit dry. So I'm going to hit it with a hairdryer real quick. And while she's doing that, I will say thank you guys for coming and hanging out. You know I love hanging, love it, hang with all of you guys and seeing you out here. So thank you for joining us. Um, don't forget, check in the link in the description down below for more information on all the kind of cool stuff that you could find on theartshipper.com. Uh, I oh. was mid-rambling. So well, nothing... ramble away. I'm for the rambles. Yeah. I did. Well, it was, you know, no good ramble going. A little good ramble? Yeah. I'm going to pull out a little of my yellow and a little bit of my red and make some more of that great orange that we have all over the background that was so much fun, right? With a fun orange. Make your bright orange. If you have a orange paint that you just purchased, that'll work too. I'm going to come along the neck ribbon. I'm going to outline that neck ribbon. I might add a little more red to it because I want my orange to be a little more rich and vibrant. How fun. Dipping in the water, one drop of water to improve flow. And I'm going to very carefully come around the center of my bow with my brush. And then let's go around the outside. And see how that helps it just be its own little space. It just gives it that dimensionality and that zone to pop. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Making sure it looks good. You can touch it up. Boom, boom, boom. Come down here. And see how you can make those points just totally pointy. Just outlining the little ribbon. How's our little brushes doing and our big brushes? Very good. Everyone is really loving that this is very little brush friendly. They like, they really like how it's turning out. The colors are just super cute. It's just fun, super cuteness. Yeah. Fun, super cuteness. Now I'm going to get some fresh orange on there. And I think I'm going to outline my heart. A nice heart outline. Rinsing out thoroughly because orange is the exact contrast in here. And so if you got it into your turquoise, you would lose all the vibrancy of your turquoise. And I don't want to. I'm going to pull a lot of highlight into this. And I'm going to make sure that I highlight the top of the bow here and here. From everything I've already done, right? A little bit there. Maybe across the top. See, that's very nice. You can play with that. You can always get a little yellow into it if you need to brighten it up. All right. And come down there. So feel like you can play with that space on your bow. See how we're doing? Cute, 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 cute. Is it cute? I like to rinse out if I just to keep the vibrancy up. I'm going to come in here and make a nice bright turquoise highlight for the eye. I used a lot of yellow into that. Let's come around the outside edge here of my eye and brush a little bit of that. Just a light brushing. 
I always come back into my turquoise. Yeah, I can just shade that out. The eye is my favorite part. Just for me personally, that's what I'm excited about. Now I'm going to get some of my black paint. I'm going to get a drop of water and get right into my black. And you can see I'm swirling it around. And the reason that I do that is to use the water to thin the paint, the heavy body paint, and improve the flow. And I can offload by pressing out, get everything on the tip or toe of my brush, like what you see here. And that'll make it easier for me to come inside the center of the eye and make a little pupil. And if I need to come up over here and improve that line, from that line you can come around the outside edge, you can clean any of this up as you need to. Okay? So it's a good time to like check things and go, is it good? Is it happy? Rinsey, rinse, rinse. I might do a little white and pink, a very light one, just here at the top of my little heart. That's cute. It to is. Get, to get that reflection in the eye, this really should be dry. So let's hit it real fast. Okay. Real fast. Real fast. Shh, 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 shh. She's super fast. She's going to be so fast that she's not going to leave me any time to talk to you or tell you how you should not be holding your um, hair dryer that close with high heat because it would certainly affect the paint color. Yes. And if you're painting a less expensive paint, it will be more impacted by the temperature of the hair dryer. Just, uh, yeah. just because things are, you know, uh, part of what you pay for in propane is that they engineered a lot more science into it and said less color shift would be good. <laughs> That's all it is. So I've loaded my number two bright up. I'm going to make one kind of big dot and two smaller dots, get a little more. And then I'm going to do the little triangle, which is the reflection that's narrow into the eye and then widens out. You guys see that? Yes. So that's when you really get, cool. When you get back from all of a sudden, his eyes like really wet <sighs> and cutie patootie. Wow, that just came together. It just does. And then to sign, I told you I had the little brush over here. You did this under in under an hour. Live. <laughs> Live, under an hour. Live, teaching. <laughs> I'm going to get a little of my turquoise, drop in my water just to sign. This is a number one monogram liner. If you're painting all the time, this is a good detail brush to consider investing in. All right. I'm going to sign my name. And the reason that I'm signing in the aqua is I believe that when we sign our names, we should think about the composition of the art and make sure that our signature does not negatively detract away from the image that we spent probably a good amount of time working on. Hmm. And that's just why I'm more thoughtful about that. Okay. Woo! That turned out great. People, everybody's enjoying it. Don't forget, if you're a little brush, oh, not that one, that one. That one's available for you at home. And if yeah. you're a big, you're big brush, brush and you just want to use that, it's not cheating. Remember, it's one of the things I would go back in time and tell my baby artist self. Mm -hmm which is that I don't have to be perfect and tracing is okay. These are important things for new artists to know. I hope you're having a good time over this holiday craft season. I hope you're enjoying your Halloween. And most importantly, I hope you're enjoying your life. Be good to yourself. Say kind words to yourself. Be good to each other. Say kind things to each other. And we want to see you at the easel really soon, especially for tomorrow because we're going to be doing our Wolfman, which is another one of my designs. I can't wait to see you. I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.